Intermittent fasting, plain and simple. Why is it such a complicated topic? And you know, it's a very important thing to do, but it seems to be very confusing. So I want to break this down a bit just to you know, give you my idea of uh, what I recommend for my patients and how I implement it for myself. Um, again, I'm a family physician. Anybody who has diabetes, type one, type two, I always recommend talk to your doctor because when you go through periods of fasting, you know, one of the goals of this and which will happen is that your insulin levels drop. And if you are dependent on insulin or you take medications to regulate insulin or uptake of sugar, good idea to talk to your doctor first. But anyway, so plain and simple. Um, I recommend intermittent fasting daily. I know some people say, oh, twice a week, this and the schedule. It's complicated to me and uh, the way I implement it. If I don't do things every day, I probably won't do them. Um, I read a lot of studies on this and you know, people have tried different time lengths and all that. And it seems to be that there's like a sweet spot for most people. And it's of course a general generalization. It seems to be that 16 hours of intermittent fasting is ideal. That means you're eating in an eight hour period and then you fast for 16 hours. And that's actually not as bad as it sounds. And you can work your way up to that. You can start with maybe 12 hours and then you go 13, 14 and so on. So I give you an example. If you have your dinner at 6 p.m., which is usually time where I recommend to have dinner, I don't like people to eat too late. There are several reasons for that, but let's say you eat at, at 6 o'clock at night, then your first meal would be the next morning at 10 a.m. And most people are like, yeah, that's fine, you know, as long as I have my coffee in the morning. And that's fine, you can have your coffee in the morning. Just don't put anything in it, I'm gonna get to that. So the way I recommend it, and that's for really uh, uh, optimizing the effects of intermittent fasting, I wanna talk about the health benefits, and the effect that most people are really after is to lose fat. That's belly fat, visceral fat, as well as superficial fat. It responds extremely well to intermittent fasting if you do it right. So the last meal, your dinner, should not have any carbohydrates in it. So what does that mean? No rice, pasta, potatoes, fruits, breads, any of those things are out. Try to make it lean, have uh, good meats and use good fats and oils. Oils and fats have been vilified, they shouldn't be. Fat is actually a very important part of your diet and I wanna talk in another video about that a bit more. And again, for simplicity reasons, what fats are good to use when let's say you uh, cook some meat at night or you, or you stir fry some vegetables. So what I recommend uh, is very simple. Use butter, coconut oil, avocado oil, and for your salad, olive oil. Just to keep it simple, you can make a vinegar dressing. So olive oil and vinegar, that's, those are all fine. Um, don't worry about really the quantities. Um, make it tasty, make it good, use spices. That's, that's all absolutely fine. Avoid the oils that are highly inflammatory and synthetic, and those are called vegetable oils, even though they're not made from vegetables. They're more seed oils. We're talking about sunflower oil. We're talking about canola oil, soybean oil. Those things avoid high in omega-6 fatty acids synthetically produced. Another video, I highly recommend to cut those out. So anyway, good fats, Protein and, and, and fiber, you know, have a, have a healthy uh, balanced meal, just cut out the carbohydrates. And the reason for that is overnight, what do we do? We enter a fat burning phase. That's part of what intermittent fast, fasting does. So if I eat carbohydrates at night, that fat burning sets in very, very late because, you know, it takes longer until the body has extracted all the calories in the complex carbohydrates that I've ingested. Uh, before the body says, hey, you know what? Let me look for something else to use for fuel. Now I'm gonna burn fat. So it just takes longer. So you're really shooting yourself in the foot if you do that. So just have, so cut the carbs out at night. That's the one meal, no carbs. And then just hydrate, drink water, very important. And then again, um, after dinner, uh, 16 hours before your next meal. So in the morning when you wake up, start out with a big glass of water, mm -hmm. right? After, right after you wake up and then you can drink coffee, tea, as long as it's black coffee, black espresso, don't put anything in it. You can have black tea, green tea in any amount you like. Do not put agave, sweetener, creamer, anything at all in there. And the reason is as soon as I consume even as little as three calories, and these calories can come from fat, they can come from protein, which is like in our creamers, or they can come from sugar or, or fructose and like agave then you stop fasting. It spikes your insulin ever so slightly and your body says, you know what, I'm, I'm done burning fat. I'm looking for uh, carbs now. And so that period where you're burning fat is cut short and it's not necessary. Also, you're gonna crave food more because oh, you spiked your insulin, now you're gonna be more, more hungry. So keep it clean. 
water, again, coffee, tea, any amount, just don't put anything in it, you know, until it's time for your first meal. So keeping it simple makes a lot of sense here. So what are the benefits of this? Benefits of intermittent fasting? One we talked about already, you trigger fat burning and you trigger that at a very high amount, even the visceral fat. And I talked about that in, an, in another video. Visceral fat is the fat that sits around the organs. That's the deep fat. And that's really the fat that pushes your belly out and it causes us to uh, buy pants with a bigger waist size and all that. And that fat is highly inflammatory, very, very, very bad for um, the body in general, is at the root of many diseases as, as we know them. And then of course also the more superficial fat, the fat that we're targeting, for example, when people go for, for liposuction, those, that's the fat that's above the muscle, that's the superficial fat, the love handles and all these. All that fat does respond. That, those are energy stores that your body utilizes when you do intermittent fasting. It says, hey, great, I've got plenty of energy here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dig into that. So that's the number one benefit. Number two, you decrease your insulin. Why is that important? So it's something I wanna talk about more in another video, but as um, we get older usually, people build up something called insulin resistance. And you might've heard of that. Insulin resistance really means that insulin doesn't work so good anymore. The pancreas makes more and more insulin. It doesn't work great. And we're getting into this uh, problematic stage. And in some people, when it becomes extreme, it can even lead to diabetes. So um, intermittent fasting helps to really bring down that resistance because when you think about it at night, you don't eat any carbs, any sugar. You don't really spike your insulin. Insulin is mostly spiked by carbohydrates, especially simple carbohydrates, but even complex carbohydrates like in bread and in pasta. When you eat healthy fats and, and proteins and fiber, it spikes it a lot less. It spikes it a tiny bit, but much less. So that insulin spike decreases and that means also in the morning you're fasting insulin and I measure that a lot in my patients a fasting insulin in the morning not just a fasting blood sugar blood sugars go up and down a lot a fasting insulin is a good indicator for me how well your metabolism is actually functioning and if you are entering a stage where you do become a bit more insulin resistant that together with a lab value called a hemoglobin a1c which shows me kind of your blood sugars over a period of about three months this shows, shows the average of this so, uh, so, in, so, so in the morning, the fasting insulin will be lower and that is very important. So it does a few things. One, it's of course a lot healthier for you. And the, and the second part is that you're gonna, be have, you're gonna have a lot less cravings for food. So it's easy in the morning to just start out with the water and coffee, tea or espresso and not be too crazy hungry. You're not, you're not starving, you know, your body is good. It's on autopilot, it's burning body fat. You've got plenty of, of anybody, I don't care how lean you are, you have body fat, you know, and the body's using that and that's great. So, so that's the second part. So it decreases the insulin, fasting insulin, which is, which is really an amazing thing. Thirdly, um, human growth hormone, HGH, you might've heard about that. It's a very important hormone. So when I went to medical school, one of my professors said, this is the fountain of youth. And uh, a lot of people spend a lot of money to inject themselves with human growth hormone. Small amounts can be beneficial. Big amounts, as we see in bodybuilders, can cause problems, um, but your own body makes it. It's just as we get older, we make less human growth hormone. And when we do intermittent fasting, we actually can increase uh, the amount that we produce quite a bit, between three and five fold. That's a lot of uh, uh, human growth hormone that we would usually not produce. So it's very beneficial. So Again, it's, it's, it's an important hormone. It regulates many different things. It's, it's a responsible for healthy cell building and metabolism, and we can optimize and increase human growth hormone just by intermittent fasting. Okay, so that's a very easy one. Um, number four, cell repair. So it does trigger actually the repair and a process called autophagy. You might've heard about that one. That just basically means in, in a period of starvation and intermittent fasting to the body is like a, uh, the beginning of a period of uh, starvation. It's not uncomfortable in that sense. And it's actually something that over time is a, a very easy for you to do. But what it does is um, it triggers the autophagy, which means the optimization of what's happening inside your cells. So the cell says inside, it, it cleans house. It looks at, well, what's working well, what isn't working well, what is, what is breaking down, what's a pathologic product. And especially when it comes to mitochondrial health, and that's something I want to explain more in another video. We have a better understanding today of how important these little organelles in our cells are. Your mitochondria are the engines in your cell. They produce energy, the little power plants. And they're hugely important. 
And we believe now they're probably at the root also, if they become malfunctional, they're at the root of many diseases, even diseases such as cancer, autoimmune disorders, and heart disease. And mitochondrial health can be improved through intermittent fasting. Because as you're fasting, again, it triggers autophagy, which weeds out old mitochondria and replaces them. It uh, weeds out breakdown products, so it cleans the cell. And in some cases, a whole cell might be just wiped out. If a cell is too malfunctional, too problematic, um, the body says, you know what, I want to get rid of this one. And that is actually a good thing. So the body really cleans house, weeds out bad things. It's like the spring cleaning in your house. But you can do it every night. And it's hugely important and, and very beneficial to your health. Then number five, you decrease inflammation. Inflammation, I talked a bit about in, a, in another video when we talked about visceral fat. Inflammation is really a bad thing that causes your body to uh, be uh, predisposed to many diseases. And I compare this usually to uh, a car that's you know running with sludgy oil and it's not maintained and, and so on. So uh, inflammation is at the root of many diseases and intermittent fasting decreases inflammation to a very, very high degree. Boost the metabolism. So basically the met metabolic rate goes up as well. And that's another point. So uh, you burn more fat, you even at rest, you expend more energy. And uh, this is something that helps you even throughout the day to burn more calories than you usually would. So boosting your metabolic rate is another benefit of intermittent fasting and uh, it's one that actually also happens automatically. So you're going to feel better. You're not going to be a starving hungry in the morning. You're helping out your body to fight inflammation, um, optimizing human growth hormone. Um, you're optimizing your insulin. You're decreasing insulin resistance all with intermittent fasting. Plus, truthfully for me, I like intermittent fasting because it just eases up my day. I, um, in the morning when I wake up, all I have is a triple espresso, don't put anything in it, and then about three hours later I eat. And I work out early in the morning, and I find that actually great. Uh, people just think, oh, I'm, I haven't eaten anything yet, I can't work out yet. That's actually not true. It's actually the optimal time to work out because your hormones in the morning, deep in this fasted state, are optimized. So you will have great results working out in the morning. So anyway, this is a very um, plain and simple explanation of intermittent fasting. It's a very simple thing. Just make sure you keep it clean and simple and try to go ideally for about 16 hours of fasting and then you have an eight hour window in which to eat. Um, if you have uh, diabetes or any other condition, of course, talk to your doctor, you know, as with any changes in your dietary pattern or um, if you, again, have medications that might be affected by this. All right, hope this helps and talk to you next time. Bye.